So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm Jessie, I'm the head of cyber research at Sepio, and I'm just doing a seri series of interviews um, with industry experts on a range of topics. So the first question I have for you is, can you please just tell me about yourself and your experience with cybersecurity? Sure. Um, I've been in cybersecurity nearly 20 years. Uh, it's been a bit of a journey, uh, starting with uh, initially Endpoint in the days where antivirus was all people thought they needed on their computers. Uh, spent then time uh, building a company called Palo Alto Networks as the CEO. Uh, when uh, threats coming through firewalls were not being uh, properly identified, policies not in place. And uh, we uh, innovated in that market and uh, upped the uh, requirements for firewalls in the industry. Uh, following on the path uh, of finding the next most important threat uh, was to focus on the cloud uh, and then uh, in a uh, role of the chief operating officer uh, led uh, Zscaler to its uh, IPO in 2018. So uh, a journey to find out how to stop the bad guys and the threats from all different perspectives. So based on your experience, what do you think the biggest threat to cybersecurity is? Well, it's, uh, it's evolved over time. Today, I think the biggest threat is the lack of technology um, that's been deployed to actually predict and prevent. Um, if you take a look at most of the technology that today still exists, it's still very policy-based, still very much remediating, uh, oftentimes after threats have already made their way into an enterprise. So uh, the biggest threat in my mind is the lack of technology and innovation that's truly focused on the predictive and preventative front end of the piece, piece of the equation. And how have you seen hardware security issues play out over your career? Yeah, this is quite interesting. Uh, the industry was very much about hardware, whether it was gateways, <clears throat> firewalls, proxies uh, deployed in the data center and in the network. Uh, but, you know, with movement toward the cloud, with uh, applications existing both on premise, off premise, with workers being both uh, within the network and also outside remote, it was we've seen it's changed very much and it's really put a strain on the hardware component uh, of the network. But that is to say that um, hardware alone um, is not going to be able to protect from threats. However, there's some are hardware pieces of the equation that have been uh, pretty much ignored or, or not really focused upon. Uh, and, and that's one of the interesting things that I found here about Sepio. Mm. So how has the global shift um, to remote work increased hardware risks? Um, well, it, it's increased risks across the board. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, the access remote from workers, employees at home, there's really no telling uh, what type of hardware they might be using, uh, the vulnerabilities on that hardware. And so while in the old model where employees were in the office, you could for a pretty good degree uh, put policy in place and controls and deploy and, and monitor the types of hardware and software that they were using. <clears throat> but that changed significantly, particularly during this period of COVID when the uh, number of uh, remote employees has just uh, gone off the charts. Mm -hmm. um, this in and of itself is perhaps one of the biggest things that has created a hardware vulnerability, um, whether it's, again, the, the laptop uh, or even the keyboards, the, the devices uh, that uh, employees are accessing with. They now become very interesting targets for people that are looking to find entry into an enterprise's valuable uh, assets. So why is zero trust so essential for today's threat landscape? Yeah, zero trust, um, and again, zero trust is a broad statement um, being implemented by many different companies in different ways. It's servers, uh, gateways, uh, proxies, firewalls, and also on end devices uh, and in apps. Uh, zero trust really, uh, to me, becomes the essential, uh, if I could use a checkpoint, 
uh, as the word for um, admitting uh, employees into uh, the network, uh, into applications running either on the network or in the cloud. Uh, the focus on zero trust will probably be one of the most prevailing um, uh, efforts in cyber perhaps for the next uh, decade. Uh, and zero trust, as I said, manifests itself in many different points in the networks and the endpoints in the cloud on the devices. And each of those is going to have to meet the necessary checkbox, uh, you know, to secure um, uh, enterprise uh, uh, intellectual property. So one of the first steps to deploying zero trust is to define the protect surface. But why can this be a challenge for organizations today? Yeah. Well, again, it goes back to the conversation we had a few moments ago about <clears throat> the uh, remote workplace and the cloud. Um, at the end of the day, there are so many different assets within an enterprise um, that um, leave, themselves, uh, leave themselves open to mm -hmm. vulnerability. And so this attack surface is, uh, is significantly expanded. Um, and uh, are we still online? Are we still recording? Yeah. Okay, because I just lost your uh, the picture on the screen here. Let me just make sure. Okay, there we go. For some mm -hmm. reason. Okay, we're good. Yeah, it says it's recording. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's 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 greatly it expanded the uh, attack surface, and um, you know one of the missions I've had personally has tried to has been to try to understand what are those vulnerable um, uh, zero trust gaps mm -hmm. on the attack surface, and you know I've done the gateway. I've done the firewall, but what you know, I really haven't seen much focus upon uh, is in the actual uh, device level security. Um, there are many, many, many more devices attached to networks now that are unknown. Mm -hmm. That has to be addressed. So how does Sapio's Hack One solution enable zero trust? Yeah. Well, again, uh, interestingly, you know, as I shared my, my my journey and my search for the proper you know points of vulnerability, mm -hmm. you know Hack One was quite unique, um, quite unique in its uh, in its focus on uh, that device level um, attack. Um, uh, most companies are, are not doing this. Um, even those companies that I've seen in the um, IoT space, uh, most of what they're doing is trying to address the attack coming from a device at some uh, entry point, whether it be through the proxy, the firewall. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there are a lot of clever ways to compromise an enterprise that are right at the device level. So in my mind, this is a unique, and, and if I can share, I've shared a little bit about my history here. I always look for that unique uh, part of the security equation that nobody else is really focusing on, and, and this is um, quite interesting with what Sepio is doing. Um, you know, in, in my mind, um, uh, it really starts to address the important piece that I shared earlier around the idea of each really And then finally, what is one piece of advice you would give to organizations regarding zero trust? Yeah, um, again, maybe I'm being a little bit redundant, but I would probably go to that theme uh, of predictive. Um, zero trust still, for the most part, um, focuses a lot on uh, what I consider to be prevention, prevention at applications, prevention at endpoints, prevention in the network. Um, but I believe that um, if you really think about the notion of uh, predicting, um, predicting in such a way that you can prevent, you really cannot deny uh, the risk at the device level. Um, and so, uh, you know, to really truly achieve zero trust this level of uh, prevention has got to have a much more broader footprint and a much more predictive capability. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time today and giving your expert insights into Zero Trust and cybersecurity in general. Thank you. Have a good day. And you. Thank you so much.